If I can save it, I will get to it, because I've got like seven minutes left. Um, in the world of nutrition, again, in order to objectify, I'd like to go on record stating that I recommend the consumption of whole foods, and I recommend a diet of fruits and vegetables. As much vegetables as you care for. I recommend more vegetables in terms of greens, when I'm talking about vegetables, talk about greens, salad fixings if you're from Georgia. Uh, recommend more greens, as far as I know, than anyone else in the world of sports nutrition. And what I recommend is that you consume almost half your volume from greens. But I don't ever measure volume in that way. What I measure is calories. That's far more objective. And what I'm looking for is a range of 2 to 4 percent of total calories consumed from vegetables, from dark green leafy vegetables, light green leafy vegetables, young tender greens. Approximately 3% of your total calories from greens. How much is that in food? For a group of athletes, it's somewhere between a head of romaine and two heads of romaine a day on average. Doesn't mean you have to eat it every day. Some days you might not eat greens at all. You might just be thrilled with the fruit because it's so good. But on the days, if you average your nutrition out through a year, that's what we're looking for. I recommend a diet that is so low in fat that it allows for optimum human performance. Anything over 10% of calories from fat will result in measurable loss in our ability to transfer and uptake, I'm sorry, transfer and utilize oxygen. It doesn't affect our ability to uptake oxygen, but once it gets into the bloodstream, it affects our ability to transfer and utilize oxygen. Once Fat consumption re goes beyond 10% of calories consumed. If you eat 2,000 calories a day, that's 200 calories from fat. If you eat 4,000 calories, it's 400 from fat. Single digit calories and fat will make not only for op optimum uptake, transfer, and utilization of sugars, fuel, but also for optimum transport and utilization of oxygen. Oxygen and fuel are kind of important to an athlete. And so fat plays a huge role. And the issue there, as I'm, as I'm trying to make clear, is not about how much, but how little. We're recommending sing, single-digit fat consumption. So now we have water, sugar, minerals, and fat. And in every issue, in every instance, Fruits come closer to mimicking human nutritional needs. If you ate nothing but fruit today, your fat consumption for the day would be around 5% of total calories consumed because average fruits run around 5% of calories from fat. <coughs> Am I recommending that you live on fruits only? No, not at all. Fruits and young tender greens. That's the diet. Anything else should be considered a condiment. I'm not telling you don't eat it. We eat for a lot of different reasons. People are funny that way. We eat because we're lonely and we eat because we're in a group of people. We eat because we're happy and we eat because we're sad. We eat just because it's time and we eat sometimes even because we're hungry. But very few of us ever actually experience hunger. Most people eat due to what they call appetite, which is the nice word, the socially acceptable word for craving, which is the socially acceptable word for addiction. Appetite and addiction, essentially the same word. Now, so the question one more time had to do with people going hyponatremic or low in, low in minerals, especially sodium, because they drank so much water. Essentially what happens is if you are on a high sodium diet, you become extremely efficient at losing sodium. If you then do a hard sports activity, you may be so efficient at losing sodium that while you're drinking lots of water, you blow your sodium out of your cell. The sodium is already, or out of your body, the sodium is already out here. Sodium's outside, potassium is inside. It's easy to remember if you just remember the old rock and roll band, Ike and Ina, or something like that. Wasn't that Ike and Ina? Tina. Tina. Oh yeah, that was it. But anyway, you can still remember Ike and Ina, and it'll get you close enough. And now it's such a bad joke. It's such a bad joke that you couldn't possibly forget which is which. And the sodium is extracellular, okay, and the potassium is intracellular. And now you know which goes with which. 
And so the sodium goes out first, and then a person ends up, ends up in that challenge problem. Now, what's cool is that the human body is incredibly efficient. It's an amazing, amazing. I mean, I did the math one time, and, and if we actually ran on gasoline, human beings could run at something like 18,000 miles per gallon. I mean, we're really efficient compared to a lot of things, like our cars. And, and if you go onto a low sodium diet, it takes approximately two weeks for the body to fully adapt to, remove, to lowering the amount of p sodium that's lost in our perspiration to a point where it's negligible. And so it's only either if you're on a high diet and, it, and hit ex extremely high exertion and high water consumption, or you're on, you were on a high diet and you just switched to low, and then you find that same experience. Otherwise, after two weeks, you're, you're no longer, I can, I can out exert anybody in terms of sweat. I can drink gallons and not go low in minerals because I'm not losing them through my perspiration. Because I've been on a low sodium diet since 1967 when my uncle sat up in bed and died. I said, ooh, and that was all he got out, and he died. And they blamed that on too much salt in his diet, and we cut, diet, we cut salt off the table, and we didn't know about why at the time. But if you think in terms of the same way that your body adapts to sunlight in a matter of weeks, you become incredibly adept at accepting less sunlight or incredibly adept at accepting more, you gain or lose your tan, it's about the same speed in terms of our mineral consumption, especially sodium. Is an objective um, indicator of how soft your sweat is? No? It's a fairly good indicator, but essentially all we have to do is not consume the foods that make us thirsty. Salt plays no role in an athlete's diet. I know when I was a kid, they used to give us salt tablets to avoid the kind of issues you were concerned. But then they'd give us more water and more salt and more water. And I'm trying to lose weight. Right? I'm trying to lose weight so I can run a little faster around the stupid quarter mile track. And, they're, and I'm drinking a gallon of water to make up for the thirst that I just got because they just gave me the salt tablets. Now I'm carrying eight extra pounds while I try to go run around. The, it was absolutely insane. And so the role that I'm always going to come back to, to tie the beginning with the ending, is that what I'm looking for is an approach that will allow me to correct situations rather than remedy or supplement them. I want to correct them. I don't want to supplement it. I don't want to add a crutch or provide a crutch. I don't want to try to suppress it. I want to correct it. It implies a certain responsibility to the individual that in our society we've certainly been trained not to accept, right? But as athletes, we start to come back to the idea that, oh, yes, in fact, we are responsible for ourselves. There's no way around it. Nobody can train for you. I'm going to be around the rest of the day. I appreciate you guys giving me time. Thank you very much.